real-time strategy games dominated the 90s to the mid-2000s. Games like StarCraft, WarCraft, Age of Empires, Total War, and many others shaped a generation's childhood. People born in the 80s and 90s have endless memories of overnight LAN parties and playing game after game honing their strategy. Even large brands were trying to get in on the action. For example, Warhammer and Halo made their own RTS games just to name two. There was a time when multiple mainstream RTS games were coming out every year. However, now it's been more than a decade since StarCraft II came out. When you look at the number of them coming out per year, you can see an obvious rise and fall. RTS games are still coming out, but most of them are indie or just remastered versions of older ones. The only mainstream one to come out in recent years is Age of Empires 4. And I'm honestly kind of shocked that Age of Empires 4 is still going strong. However, the overall question is why has there been such a decline in RTS games? And there are several reasons that I do believe explain it completely. Firstly, when it comes to most computer games, because they use a keyboard and a mouse, you can't move them to the console. However, console games can easily be moved over to the computer. And this is not a major issue that is a death knell or anything. However, it does limit the amount of people that are able to play computer games in general. This is especially true with the RTS games that crucially need a keyboard and a mouse to play. Although recent consoles can be played with a keyboard and a mouse, it really is too late for this to catch on in the mainstream. Furthermore, RTS games as a genre just don't sell as well as other games do. For example, Warcraft 3 sold 4.4 million copies and Starcraft 2 sold a total of 6 million copies. However, Overwatch sold over 50 million copies. All of these games were developed by Blizzard, but the real-time strategy games just sadly cannot compete with the shooter game. There is a reason that Blizzard shifted Warcraft from an RTS game to a mass multiplayer online role-playing game. They made far more money with World of Warcraft than they ever could with regular Warcraft games. There are a few reasons that I do believe would help RTS games sell better, but I will go over that later in the video. One of the lesser known revenue streams of RTS games was the ability they had to license the code and then reskin that code into a completely new game. Star Wars wanted a game? No problem. They just reskinned Age of Empires 2, and Dune reskinned Command and Conqueror so they could have a game as well. This pushed RTS games more into the mainstream, which benefited the genre as a whole. However, large brands moved more to first-person shooters, MMOs, or RPGs because there was just more money to be made in these types of games. This was a massive blow to RTS developers as a whole because it was a major loss of a stream of income. Trist and it's gone. Uh, what? What makes RTS games so great is the intense strategy and mental planning that is required to play them. RTS games are a small 30 minute to 2 hour self-contained strategy game. You get to build a base from scratch and then battle it out with the enemy. It often takes hundreds of hours of gameplay to master just a single game. This is why we love these type of games. However, it can be difficult for the casual gamer to be able to invest this type of dedication into just a single game. Furthermore, one of the main problems with the actual structure of RTS games is that people can get burnt out on the more repetitive aspects of it. For most senior players, the first 10 to 20 minutes of an RTS game becomes a well-oiled machine. Before the game even starts, you already know what order you will make your buildings and units in first, or what resources you will specifically focus on. Even what upgrades you will do is already in the back of your mind. The terrain of the map can make some variations to your strategy or the player you will be going against. For example, whether they rush or not can change things up a bit. However, either way, you pretty much already know what the first 10-20 to 20 minutes are going to be before you even start the game, and at that point, it's really just going through the motions of that initial setup of your base and getting ready for the actual main battle. As well, we all hit that point in the game where one of the players has an upper hand and it's really just going through the motions for about 10-15 to 15 minutes while they slowly defeat you. 
All games can get repetitive, and developers have to come up with ways to keep people interested. RPGs have massive maps and storylines that take tens of hours to complete, as well many side quests. New first-person shooter games are constantly flooding the market, keeping it fresh. Because it can take hundreds of hours to get good at an RTS, it doesn't really work to pick up a new one every year, so you just have to commit to the repetitiveness as you become more pro at the game. The reality is that this has made it difficult for these types of games to appeal to a large audience or to keep people playing them long term. I personally love RTS games, but even I got burnt out on them after many years of playing. Different solutions have been put forward to solve the repetition problem of RTS games. Games such as Warcraft 3 give you a hero that goes along with you from campaign to campaign and levels up. This gives you a sense of progress since the hero doesn't start over every single game. Something that I didn't fully appreciate at the time was actually the home city in Age of Empires 3. I do remember not liking it very much when Age of Empires 3 initially came out. However, over time it's actually grown on me quite a bit. Essentially, the way it worked is you had a home city that you could upgrade between your games. And then during your campaign, it would send you economic or military aid. So essentially, you were gaining progress in your home city even beyond just your individual games that you were playing. This way, you had a home base that was continually improving and you didn't have to completely start over every single time you did a new game. I do believe that this was heading in the right direction as far as RTS games go because it gave a sense of general progress beyond just the individual games that you were playing. Total War had a single large expanding empire where you spent large amounts of time building your economy and your army and then you could participate in a bunch of battles, essentially giving you a feeling of a much larger and grander campaign. But these are just a few examples that I thought of, of games that I felt like were adding a good amount of twist to the RTS gaming genre to keep things more interesting. However, it would seem that most companies have just abandoned making RTS games altogether instead of actually finding new and interesting ways to take them in. And I do think that no one is more guilty of this than the company Blizzard. Blizzard saw already back in the early 2000s that the peak of real-time strategy gaming was going to come to an end. That's why they transitioned Warcraft to World of Warcraft in 2004 and eventually went on to make Overwatch to try and get some of that first-person shooter crowd. And financially, this has worked out very well for them. They did step in it a bit when trying to release the Diablo mobile game. Do you guys not have phones? Yeah, you guys that, all have phones, phone, right? You can play on your tablet too. However, switching things up has been highly successful for them, and I don't think they are looking back at all. You could even argue that StarCraft 2 was a holdover when it came out. I personally think that Blizzard shouldn't completely abandon the RTS gaming community because this is the type of gaming that completely built their company. However, they just don't have a financial incentive to revisit these types of games. On a side note, Blizzard has laid off a bunch of employees in recent days. I wouldn't view this as any type of a course correction, but more just rounds of layoffs that are going on everywhere, and I don't think Blizzard is being hit specifically. Most likely, they are just cutting off a little bit of the fat, and I don't think much will change. But either way, going back to the repetitiveness of RTS gaming, there are multiple things that I personally think RTS games could incorporate a bit to help this. You could do this by adding customization outside of the actual gameplay. This would include making changes to your buildings, your units, and the way that they play in the game. Just like you customize a character in an RPG, you would be customizing your base and unit building. You could also have game modes where you start with a basic already built pre-designed base, essentially skipping the first 10 minutes of the game. Those are just a few thoughts that I had and I'm sure there are many others that people could come up with. In a way, multiplayer online battle arena games have become the spiritual sequel of RTS gaming. Games like Dota or League of Legends essentially cut out the base building aspect and jump you straight into the battle, and focuses your attention on just one hero in the actual larger battle. And because you follow only one character, it's much more appealing to casual gamers, thus making these types of games extremely popular.
At the end of the day, the main reason real-time strategy games don't get made anymore is because there is just no financial incentive. StarCraft II is the sequel to probably the most well-beloved RTS game ever to come out and sold about 6 million copies, which is down from StarCraft's 11 million copies sold. And all of the Age of Empires games, including remastered ones and the most recent one, have sold about 25 million copies. These may seem like big numbers, but keep in mind Overwatch, a first-person shooter game, sold 50 million copies, completely blowing both of these out of the water. Even if you take the financial incentive out of it, the passion-driven projects that existed at Early Day Blizzard and other companies just are not around anymore. But is all hope lost? I would say not yet. There are still millions of people that enjoy these types of games and I think there always will be. Age of Empires 4 seems to have sold pretty well and has an active online community. There is also an indie underground that continues to make these types of games. The one that is most noteworthy to me is Frost Giant Studios. Former Blizzard employees and others came together to form this company so that they could make the future of RTS gaming. They are currently creating a game called Stormgate and it honestly looks really promising. I am looking forward to when the final game does eventually come out. So overall it might not be a bad thing if these types of games do go more underground. It would allow for more passion driven projects to come onto the scene. I am also curious how VR will affect real time strategy games. It could be completely game-changing if it is incorporated in some type of a way. I remember back in the day almost two decades ago thinking that the touchscreen was going to completely change how we did RTS gaming, but it would seem that the keyboard and the mouse has stuck as the standard for RTS gaming. You do have mobile games, but that is a bit of a different genre. But either way, those are my thoughts. Please let me know yours and have a great day.